Homestead Dairy has come a long way since 1979 when Floyd Hu Yin and his brother purchased a modest family farm in Plymouth, Indiana from their dad. At the time, they were milking 110 cows. Today, the dairy numbers 1,800 milking cows and 300 dry cows, while milking another 1,700 cows at three other nearby facilities. Plans call for expansion within the next five years. But more cows means more odor emanating from the dairy, which impacts neighboring residents. To lessen the impact of the odor from cow manure, Homestead Dairy developed a waste-to-energy facility that takes a steady stream of manure and converts it into electric power. We're able to capture the gas, which if we weren't running it through this system, it normally just goes up into the air. And that's part of the odor that the neighbors will, we haven't had a lot of neighbors complain about it, but it gets, you know, you, I can tell it's there, so I know they can tell it's there. Sure. Well, this will help eliminate a lot of that. In October 2013, the dairy began producing one megawatt of electricity from a waste stream that is piped more than a quarter mile to a new facility called Homestead Green Energy. The animal waste is fed into two mixing tanks, then pumped into two complete mix anaerobic digesters, which convert it to methane gas. Gas from the digesters powers two Caterpillar G3512 generator sets. Electric power produced by the generators is sold back to Northern Indiana Public Service Company, or NIPSCO. It'd be another income source. We got a 15-year contract with NIPSCO uh, to supply, supply the power. And uh, the plan is, as we grow the dairy operation, we'll put in another gen set. It's driven to make money. I mean, that's what we're doing it for. We wouldn't be doing it if it didn't make money but it also helps the environment for your nutrient values. The crops use the manure better, the odor reduction for the community um, is a large benefit, but to make money is the key. When Hu Yin looked at several other farm renewable energy facilities, he determined that cat gen sets were his best choice. We looked at their installation, talked to the guy that has to take care of it. They had foreign made engines and, his, and everybody that had the foreign made engine, their common complaint was parts availability and cost. Parts availability and service were major considerations for Hu Yin. It's going to need service, so you got to have parts and service available. You can't, we can't afford the downtime. When the gen sets were due for their first oil change, Rogers required some help servicing the valves. I called up the dealer. Next day we're down here, no questions asked, very helpful, great people and uh, got in and got out. You know, they understand that it's got to be running, not sitting. Huyin was inspired by the large-scale agricultural sustainability he saw at another farm in northern Indiana. Many are hopeful that farms across the country will adopt sustainable production practices, thereby reducing fuel costs and pollution. Yes, I could see many dairies taking advantage of of a resource that they have and, and turning it from a liability, from a, a pollution or odor uh, stance into, into a valuable resource for the community. And I, I, I do believe that there's great benefit for the dairy community in an installation like this. Caterpillar has been building generator sets and engines capable of burning renewable gas fuels since the 1960s. It's got a rich history in it, uh, a tremendous amount of assets out in the field as well as our dealer organization is, is set up as a, as a local avenue for uh, parts and service. Uh, I think you'll find that the, the Caterpillar Dealer Network has a, has a service organization that's unmatched 